Got to keep us in the same. Okay, okay, I'm I'm I can't hear you, right? Why don't you leave and go back? No, I'm okay. I think it's his. Uh, I think it's him. That's why he's. Oh, uh, got it. Can you hear me? I, I hear you well. How are you? Oh, Baruch Hashem, good. Hey. hey see Jonathan. How are you? <laughs> and Yassi Rieber on also. I know. Good to see you guys. I miss you guys so much. It, you, know, you know, they say it's never too late, right? It's never too late. I miss you guys every day, seriously. <laughs> It, 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 on tonight is Pesach Sheni. Yeah, I know. It's uh, isn't it also uh, uh, Michael's uh, birthday. Actually, uh, it, since it's never too late, even though your birthday was a few days ago, so it's, it's, it's an honor of your birthday. Thank you, thank you. Shev shnas atzlocha begashmi shavruchnius. Amen. Shev a lot of nachat from your wife and she from you, together from each of your children. Orachamim shalom tovot. Amen. And uh, I know you can see the tea bag on the video, so I can't really. Uh, <laughs> but I have, I have also some. Uh, it's, B, it's for bringing this BYOB. You have to bring your own bottle. You have a bottle, Yosef? I have, I have more than one, yes. <laughs> they say that Koanim have a lacquery. Yeah, I know. Lac- you know what a lacquery means? Tell me. A lacquery means speed. Where's your oh, Lachaim? Let's go. Yeah, it's coming. My, my Jenny bringing it for me. Okay. Dossi, how are you? I cannot hear you. Oh, can you unmute yourself, Yossi? Yes, I think you can unmute yourself. I'll unmute you. You're unmuted. I tried to, at least. I think I unmuted Yossi the second he unmuted himself. Now it should work, Yossi. Here is my red wine. L'chaim, l'chaim. Shana sa tzlacha v'gash m'svaruchni is p'sukh to livov. Chere ba'at shabi binit. Sorot tovot. L'chaim. L'chaim. L'chaim, l'chaim. Sorry. Hi. Yossi, I really miss you. I miss everybody in the shul. I hope everybody is doing good. How is Yonatan doing? He's doing a lot better, Baruch Hashem. Good. L'chaim. L'chaim, l'chaim. I wish you all the best. I hope soon we get to see each other like before. Even better, bigger, more stronger than ever before. And I really miss you guys. L'chaim. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we, we luck out. We give you a bracha because we're just, you know, Neanderthals. But you're a Cain. So your bracha goes a lot, a lot, a lot farther. Oh, you are related, Rabbi. You are Levi. Man korfat kohen. I am the servant of a kohen. Oh wow! <laughs> so, Rabbi, Rabbi was misbehaving in school, and Rabbi's mom says uh, to the teacher, "You know, Rabbi's misbehaving. I understand he's not behaving his way he's supposed to." Uh, by the way, can you hear me? You hear yeah. me well? I, I hear you well. Okay, so Robbie is misbehaving in school, and the teacher is a little bit, you know, tough with Robbie. So, um, so the the mother says you got to lighten up. You know, Robbie doesn't respond to this tough love and this this sternness and everything. So, the teacher says, so what should I do when Robbie misbehaves? So the mother says, I have a great idea. Slap the kid next to him. <laughs> you know. I don't know about you, but a lot of parents aren't experienced as being the principal and the teacher and the janitor and the cook and the tech support of their now, you know, homeschool, which is happening at home. Believe me, I do everything at home. Mopping floor, teaching, cleaning, doing bathroom, dishes, cooking, and so is my wife. Thank God. Without my wife, I don't know what I would have done. (laughs) So if you're saying it in front of your wife, then it must be true. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so this week the Torah tells us the method of how education is supposed to work and gives us hope, especially when uh, it doesn't seem like you know people, you're missing direction. The Torah gives us real direction of how, how it's supposed to work. There, the name of this week's Torah portion is Emor. Emor means to speak, and the Torah begins with actually a double expression of speech. It says you should tell the Kohanim and tell them. Say to the Kohanim, and then get a ferige, and tell them. And the yeah. question is, why is it used a double expression? So Rashi says, 
the Torah is telling us that those who know more, those who are adults, have to instruct those who are ktanim, those who are small, those who are not. Uh... Somebody at the door, ask who it is. Honey, I'm sorry. Sorry, go ahead. Those who will know more have to help those who know less. Those who are more experienced have to help those who know, those who know less. So a Kohen, who is an adult, he has to instruct his children not to go to the cemetery. He can't go to the cemetery. He has to tell his children also not to go to the, uh, the cemetery. So the, uh, the Torah uses an, a word over here, and this word is the key to understanding how education is supposed to work. And uh, before we go to that word, I think we should check out who's by the door. Oh, she did. I don't know. Kalimi? Ka Kalimi, yeah, Kalimi. Who was by the door? Neighbor? Okay. You, you could tell him. You could tell him. It's time. Oh, my God. You guys are <laughs> so funny. L'chaim, <laughs> L'chaim. Happy birthday. Uh, don't worry. You, you, whatever you eat, eat uh, for your birthday, does, you don't. You don't. You don't. Uh, uh, you guys really go all out. <laughs> somebody has to light the candle now. You, you guys send somebody else to light the candle. L'chaim, L'chaim. L'chaim, L'chaim. Thank you so much. Okay. You guys are so funny. So Yosef, on your birthday, you're supposed to make good resolutions. Oh, Baruch Hashem. Hey, hello. I, I'll show you. <laughs> you guys are so special, really. That's amazing. Baruch Hashem. Uh, no, it's okay, Brother Jim. Thanks. Thank you. I'll save you guys a piece. I'll keep it in the fridge. <laughs> I'll, I'll freeze it and I'll, I'll save you guys a piece. For a year. Thank you, David. Thank you, everybody. It's really awesome. You, you made that. You, you made my. You might you made my thirty first birthday really special. <laughs> I, I feel so young. Okay, so I, I want to um, I want you to tell us what your New Year's resolution is for your birthday. But I'll give you, I'll give you a couple of minutes to think about it while I share with you more something of the parasha and while you munch on the cake. Don't worry, you could say a bracha on it. We won't be jealous. We it, it, this for bringing is B Y O B. Bring your own bottle. B Y O C. Bring your own cake. And B Y O M. Bring your own matzah. So everyone has their own cake. You can get the memo. You have to have your own bottle, your own yeah, matzah. All right, let's go back to... So the, to, the word the Torah uses for education is the key to everything you have to know about education. The word the Torah uses is lahaz here. Say a brach, Yosef. It's kosher. It's kosher. Kosher. Enjoy. Amen. 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 Ah. So, so, so the word the Torah uses for... It, for instructing our children is lahaz here. The root of that word tells us, the root of that word is Zohar. Zohar as in like the author of the Zohar, Abishim Bar Yochai, whose Hilulo's anniversary of passing is coming up next week. He wrote the Zohar. So the root of the word to instruct your children is Zohar. Why? Because what you have to do with your children is you have to give them warmth, give them light, to make them feel good. You, no one ever wants to get criticized. I know myself, if I'm going to be criticized, the shutters of my brain close very quickly. I'm not interested in hearing what's happening next. I don't, you know, in order for, for anyone to hear, learn anything, Torah says is a method. The method is lahazir. It has to come from love, it has to come from warmth. And that just has to come from love and come from warmth. It has to be warm itself. S therapists say that uh, parents are good at catching their children doing things that, that are wrong. We're always quick to find our children doing something wrong. They hear from us if we say something, if, if we, they do something wrong. But therapists say that in order for a child to have a healthy self-esteem, a parent has to catch the child at least three times a day doing something right. So instead of saying, why didn't you take out the trash? Why didn't you throw out your dinner? Why, why are you wearing that? Why it, the child has to hear three times a day from a parent Great job. That's wonderful. What a great thing you're doing. That's so, that's so wonderful. Th that's what gives a child self-esteem, which is so important to be to becoming a, a, uh, a well-adjusted adult. It starts with having self-esteem, which self-esteem really means self-esteem really means valuing who you are, valuing your neshama. So in order to be who we need to be, we have, and our children to be who they need to be, we need to, need to build them. The way we build them is by the Zohar. Zohar means warmth and light, inspiring them. Now, there are actually um, 
three places the Torah tells us that we have to inspire our children, to tell our children what to do. The three places are uh, in this week's Torah portion and in the Torah portion which talks about the prohibition of eating blood and the Torah portion which talks about the prohibition of eating reptiles. Three times the Torah says those who are no more have to instruct those who know less. This week, which is talking about Kohanim going to cemeteries, when the Torah discusses the prohibition of blood, it says there also you have to instruct uh, your children not to eat reptiles. And the third place, um, so the laws of impurity, the laws of eating blood, and the laws of reptiles. The question is, those aren't very central to Judaism. There are laws of the Torah. Those are important laws. The Torah says to do them, but they're not central. When we think of education, we don't think about reptiles and blood and cemeteries. We think more about Shabbat, kosher, having good character. So why does the Torah choose these three obscure examples to tell us that we have to educate our children? Why these three examples? And the answer is, is that there's three scenarios that a parent will feel that it's not worth it to try to educate his child. That you may feel the child is hopeless. Parents, I'm a parent. I know how this feels. When you're in the moment and you want, you see your child doing something you shouldn't be doing, you feel like, oh my gosh, he's doomed. And you start getting frightened about what's going to happen in their future. And because you get frightened, you get angry. Oh no, and you're just like, you lose yourself. So as Einstein said, education, or it's attributed to Einstein, I don't know who said it, definitely a smart thing. Einstein said, education is what you, it remains in the mind of the child after he forgets what he learned in school. That's your goal. Your goal is not that he should say Kiddush right now or not that he should uh, do his homework right now or that he should... Uh, your goal is that, that he should something, something should he, he or she should be educated and something inside should mature and, and he should be able to be who he's supposed to be. So there's three, there's three kinds of challenges that we have. One is a challenge with the time that we're in. Then there is challenges you have with the nature of the child itself. The nature of the child itself could be difficult. And a third cha challenge is, is that the uh, values that you're trying to convey to the child may seem very foreign to the child. Maybe the child is a good boy. Maybe the, the, the world scenario, the world stage isn't that hard. But the kind of things you want to convey to the child don't connect with him. They're very distant from him. And each of these things have are, are big ones. Put them putting them all together, you know, it's 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 overwhelming. Let's go to the first one. The child is into his smartphone. Let's say they're attached to their smartphone. They're addicted to their smartphone, and uh, they're really into it. And and you don't know what to do about it. So instead of losing your cool, the Torah gives hope to the father and tells the father and mother, you should know there was a once a time. The Jewish people love to eat blood. They consume blood. Blood, blood was considered a delicacy. They're shtufim badam. They, now, although we're not into blood nowadays, but blood is a parable for all the things that kids get into and they lose themselves into and just, just not home. Like, like it, it, the child may be a good child, but he, there's lousy local conditions. He's into these things that he's into right now. And you can't talk to him from his bar mitzvah until he turns 20 or 30. You know, it's just like, whoa, he's just, you know, nobody's home. I saw this restaurant advertising that when people come into the restaurant, uh, they give like a 15% discount to anybody who puts their smartphone in this box. Your discount to just putting this. So, so just getting the child's attention, it, it seems impossible. So Torah says, you should know, despite whatever the challenges are, despite the addiction that, or the, the obsession the child has, you're able to reach the child. Don't think you can't reach him just because he has these obsessions. But then there are other kinds of challenges. Your child is into such things which make you go crazy. Like, how can he be into these things? And you just lose your cool. Like, why is he going after these, these uh, crazy things? Um, so Torah tells us about reptiles. Torah says that the only laws of reptiles, three times in the Torah. The second time is the laws of reptiles. Torah says it's forbidden for a person to eat reptiles. And you have to also instruct your children not to eat reptiles. And who eats reptiles? You, you know, there's chicken, there's fish. Who wants to eat a bat? Who wants to eat a reptile? It's crazy. And yet the Torah says, 
this is something that you have to tell your child, which means that he doesn't know this on his own, which means the child's into stuff that you think is crazy, local. Why is this kid doing these kind of things? And Torah says, don't, don't give up on the child. Just because he's into crazy stuff, and not just for, for a child, this is true for anybody in your life, that don't ever discard it, re, the Jewish soul, always value who the child is, and deep down the child's okay. Deep down, he, something inside him that he's okay. He may be doing all kinds of crazy stuff, but deep down to believe with absolute faith that your child is okay inside and it's going to come out and it's going to be okay. Just having that in your mind opens a pipeline of blessings so that your child could actually go in that way. Your, your thoughts, you believe your child's going to be okay, that actually brings the blessing of God that makes your child okay. Besides the fact that your child wants to be who you expect him to be. There's a story about this man comes to a rabbi. He says, Rabbi, I don't understand why my son turned out this way. I could tell already when he was three years old, he had this nature of being a liar and a thief. And I don't know how he you know, turned out this way. The rabbi says, what do you expect? <laughs> he turned out the way you expected him to. So if you've seen your child negative things, Torah says, Look deeper. The previous Rebbe once used this expression. People say, the previous Rebbe said, that when the light is shining, you can see all kinds of dirt in other people. But the previous Rebbe said that the Torah teaches us, that Judaism teaches us, when the light is shining, then you could see all the light that's there, all the diamond, all the beauty that's there when the light is shining. I see Ariel over there uh, is is falling asleep. What time is it over there in Chile? Three o'clock in the morning already? Sorry, I'm coming from another favorite and already <laughs> like, sorry, Charlene Habit, the, sorry, I'm like the the friend of the friend who came to your birthday, so happy birthday. Sorry, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> what time is it by you, Ariel? Mm, I have no idea. It's like, it's like 12. 12, 12 okay. So, okay. So, so the to- Torah tells us Despite the fact that the uh... sorry, just 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 a, a, a very short story. Like yeah. mother went to the Rebbe and said to the Rebbe, like she wants to have a, a child like the Rebbe. Really? There it is yeah. before. And the Rebbe said, to have a child like the Rebbe, this child ha- need to have a mother like the mother of the Rebbe. Uh, so wow. So, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Very beautiful. into what, what you're saying right now. There's a story which you can't hear the story enough times. You probably heard the story before. This boy comes to, uh, this boy is misbehaving in school and the teacher and the principal call up the mother and they say to the mother, your child needs to go on Ritalin. You know Ritalin is, real. Sorry, no. It's a drug that helps a child focus. It's for ADHD. I, uh, like Ritalin, Ritalin. Right. I, they, they give it to me when I was a child. Yeah. <laughs> Baruch Hashem. So, so the mother says, I can't put my child on Ridlin because if, I, if he goes on Ridlin, then, then he'll never get a Shidduch because I'll hear about it in second grade and second, they'll hear about it in third grade. They'll hear about it in high school and then they'll hear about it in college and, and no, everyone will have anything to do with my child. So, so the teacher's like, but I can't have him in school. He's not focused. He's not there. So, so, so the, the, uh, mo- the mother says, I have so many kids at home. How do you want me to, how do you expect me to give him Ritalin in the morning? What do you want from me? So the teacher says, I have an idea. I'll, I'll give it to him in school. No one will know. So the boy goes to school and the teacher calls him over the first day of school. And he says, listen, we have a code. I'm going to ask you every day to bring me a coffee. And this is just a code. When we go to, when I tell you to give me, bring me a coffee, you'll go to the teacher's lounge and bring me a coffee. But there is a bottle of Ritalin. And you want you every morning to take from that bottle of Ritalin. So after a month, the mother asks the uh, 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 teacher, ask her son, how are you enjoying school? Mom, I love it. It's fantastic. It's great. The teacher listens to me, he <laughs> understands me. I listen to him. He understands it. So the mother said, what do you think brought about this change? I know exactly, the child says, what brought about this change. You see, we have, a co- we have this thing. He tells me in the morning to bring him a cup of coffee. But I know what this is really about. I go to the office and there is a bottle of Ritalin. And I take the Ritalin and I put it in the coffee. <laughs> so so that, that's how it is with each of us. We, we, we have to realize that our, our children have a lot of challenges and especially because they're dealing with fresh new principles 
and new teachers and new janitors have no experience in this field. And you can't expect them to be, you know, a whole day in school the same way they're in school. You gotta give them some slack. You know, a lot of rabbis are saying during Sirat Omer, I'm, I'm not weighing into this question, but a lot of rabbis are saying this year's Sirat Omer, you can listen to music. A lot of rabbis are saying, if you feel anxiety, if you'll just listen to music. We had Rabbi Lazar on our bringing last night. He's like, yeah, listen to music, no problem. Because people are under such stress, they need to have more simcha, more happiness. So bottom line is, the Torah tells us three times. I mentioned two of them. First example was, Shmuel Dahan, let's see your face. You're a beautiful guy. Open, open your Zoom. Let's see your face, Shmuel Dahan. It's been a while since we've seen you. So there are three scenarios you think you can't help your child, either because he's so addicted to whatever he's into, or a second scenario, because he's into something so low, doing something so to you, is so ich, you don't want you don't want to even be near your child. You can't, you can't see anything good. Torah says, no, lahazer gdolim. You, you have to give light and warmth to your child, even though it's a vicious cycle. You tell your child to do something, and he doesn't do what you want him to do, and therefore you become more strict than the child, and he does things even worse. The Torah says, break out of this whole cycle. Lahaz here. It has to come with light and warmth to catch the moments where your child is shining and give him your best self. So there's a third scenario, and that's this week's Torah portion. The third scenario is, yes, Ariel. So, so sorry, but... Once it's about passion, pa passion, okay? It's about blood. It's about something that, right. that, that makes passion. Right. Uh, and second is about a reptile, something that is against blood. It's something cold. No, 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 no. The, the analogy of reptiles is things which are disgusting, which are, which ah, are okay, sick. Okay, okay, okay. Something disgusting that doesn't, okay? And the third? Like a guy go, uh, tells a rabbi, rabbi, I have a problem. My son is, is dancing with these uh, non-Jewish girls. And oh, he's yeah. eating uh, uh, non-kosher food, yeah. and he's crazy. The rabbi says, your son is not crazy. He has eats a harder. If he was eating non-Jewish girls, and he was dancing with the non-kosher food, then he'd be crazy. But so you see your son doing things which are to, you, to you are like, how does he, he have eats a harder for these things even? Like, where does this come from? So Torah says that don't look down at your child. Look at, see beneath that. See the neshama. Let, let yourself, allow yourself to enjoy that your child's going to be okay. Because just your thinking that will make it okay. And it may be painful at the moment because you don't see it. Thur says, don't look at the way things look. But there's a third analogy. Third analogy, this week's Torah portion, the laws of impurity. What is impurity? You can't find it with a magnifying glass. You can't find it any of your senses. There's nothing that can detect impurity. There has never been, and there never will be, any kind of scientific method that can, that can, discover impurity. And yet the Torah says we believe in this. And you should tell this to those who don't believe in it or don't know it. You might think the guy doesn't believe in it. How can I reach this person? I have my beliefs. They have their beliefs. There's no commonality. How can I reach them? The Torah says no. Even in a scenario, we're talking about spiritual values where it may seem like we have no commonality and, 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 and there's no way for me to connect because I believe and they don't believe. The Torah says no. There's, you don't have to give the child anything new he doesn't have already. He has an ashram. He believes in all this stuff. He, it, it, and that's going to come out. Lahazir, dolom, dolom means that you have to reach the child with love and faith that the child is going to be okay, even in a scenario where the child is totally in a different zone than you are. You have different values than he does. He or she, the child is in a different zone. Torah says, no, 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 don't, 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 don't. And but a parent may say, why is this happening to me? <laughs> Let it happen to someone else. Why is it happening to me? What does that do with me? What does that do with my life? What the Torah gives us the why. What's the why? Look at listen to the words again. The Rebbe says that means in order for those who know more to get their light, in order to you to get all of your light, how do you get your light? You get your light specifically by helping those who know less than you or are less sensitive to you or are, are and the farther they are, the more distant they, are, they seem to be, that's where you get the greatest line. That's why the Rabbi Yochanan said in, in Tainus, page 7b, Rabbi Yochanan says, much I've learned from my teachers, more I've learned from my friends, the most I've learned from my students. It's specifically the, the children which are the most difficult and the friends you have that are the most difficult, that when you reach out to them, that you get yourself the greatest light. And the Torah says, Giving this great encouragement over here. Another, another translation of those words is by your own light, by your own light shining within yourself, that's the best way to influence your children. 
They get to see you now all day long. They get to see you how you are. You want to inspire them? Bring more light to yourself. That's what the Be'er Tamayim explains. You know how you inspire others? By being an example. That's the most, as, as psychologists use the expression, what you're doing is shouting so loud at me, I cannot hear what you're saying. Or another interpretation, means you have to also use your gadom, the higher parts of yourself, your mind, to address the lower parts of yourself. You have to use your gadolim, you have to use your intelligence to govern your whims and your lusts and your moods so that your gadolim, the higher parts of yourself, are, are totally focused on the katanim, on the lower parts of yourself. Your mind is governing all that stuff and therefore you're able to be completely in control of yourself and that way your children can have someone to look up to and to learn from. Anyways, we, we have another shir coming up, another two minutes. Uh, Yosef, you have any good ideas for your resolution this year? What's your resolution for your birthday this year? <laughs> I'll, I'll try to do more mitzvot and I'll start doing it by putting uh, money in the Dhaka box every day, every morning b- wow. before that. That's a beautiful achlata. You should know that the Rebbe, the Rebbe it, it, it's, it's infinite. That's an infinite achlata. I mean, the Rebbe said you can't imagine what, what kind of impact that has. It says in, in the Hasidus, the one favor you do for someone else cause your heart and mind to become a thousand times more pure, a thousand times. And the Rebbe says that's literally. So that's why it's important every day to give charity before you pray because it, it says in the Talmud, I see Hashem with staka. It's specifically with staka that you're able to see and connect with, with Hashem. So that's a beautiful achlata. And also the Rebbe used this expression. The Rebbe says that every time a child gives a coin to tztaka, the world's on a scale. And we're all God's children. That's only mean children. Everything you give tztaka, you have to think this is going to bring Mashiach. That's a beautiful, beautiful achlata. And yeah. it should bring you a lot of hatzlacha and success. Gashmus, yeah. ruchnius, and a good Shabbos, a year of hatzlacha. And I'm yeah. waiting for my piece of cake when Mashiach comes tonight. I'm expecting to, uh, to, to catch a piece of that. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, you made my day very special. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Nice All right, cool. Lala Tov. Lala Tov.